All right guys, welcome to another YouTube video. Today we're gonna to check out to see what is going on with the check engine light, because it turned on again. I'm gonna find out exactly what it is, and if need to, we'll actually remove the uh, coils and maybe even check out the oxygen, uh, oxygen sensor, okay? Before I get started, don't forget to check out some of the videos I have on this Jeep. Uh, we've been doing some upgrades lately, like from the tires to spacers and a few other things, so check these out also. All right, so let's get this plugged in. Turn the truck on, check engine light's still on, plug in the OBD port, OBD2, and the USB, and open up force scan. Go through the screens here, and we're gonna go into DTC. And you can see right here, error code O2 sensor low voltage, bank one, sensor one. All right, so you got the cover here and it just comes off on that side just pull up on it and here it go click and on this side you do have to remove this little cover to pick that up and then this should come right off all right so now that the cover's off we'll cast back on this here is some type of a insulator or fire retardant or something specifically for the fuel injector pump. And you can see all three. So you can see all three of the coils. One, two, and three. So this is the one that was giving us the trouble. So I'm taking this one apart. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off also and then switch them to see if it continues, okay? All right, so it, it, let me show you this one right here so you can see. This one here is a, a eight millimeter. So just remove that and the coil should pop right out. But I gotta do a very last one there, okay? Hold on to this so it doesn't fall down. You don't want to try to find this later. All right, so I took out number six and number five so I can compare them. Now I know the ideal way to compare is gonna be probably to hook up some plug and see how much and how often. And I, I really don't know how to do that though. So what I'm just gonna do is, I don't see anything different except that when I put something into where the spring is, this one seems like, just by eyeballing it, it might be a little bit higher than what this one is. So I kind of wiggled the spring that's in there a little bit, and it kind of moved, so I don't know if that'll help. But what I'm going to do, just in case, because again, this has only happened once the check engine light turned on. The second time the check engine light was because of the uh, O2 sensor, the oxygen sensor, which is because there's gasoline going through the cylinder and out of the exhaust. So the oxygen sensor says, hey, what's something going on here? Why is there gas, right? So I'm going to switch these around. I'm gonna make this number six and this number five, and we'll see if it performs any different, better, the same, or if I get another error message on the number five now. If I get it on the six, then it's the spark. If I get it on the five, then it's the coil. Okay, now we're just putting everything back together. The cover, oil cap. All right, turn the truck on. Okay, the check engine did turn off, right? But we're gonna accelerate and see if we can hear it skipping or struggle or stutter at all. Notice that when you're in neutral or in park, it doesn't go past 4,000 RPM. Yeah. Alright, it sounds really good. Alright, so underneath the truck, you see the catalytic converter there? That right there is the catalytic converter. And that's always where the O2 sensors are found. So you can see it right there. So if it gives me trouble still, because it was cylinder 6 that was misfiring, which is on the left side of the truck, 
it's probably the left O2 sensor, number one. Okay, so there should be one on each side. So one recommendation is to spray it with some liquid wrench or a PB blaster or something like that. Um, and I've heard, based on studies, liquid wrench is really the best stuff out there and it's really cheap. But it'll help remove it. And with just any type of a... There is specific sockets that you can buy for it. I have one from a while back. I'll show you what it looks like here. So this is a specific socket for O2 sensors. It has this gap so that you can put it in there without removing the wire, cutting the wire, and replace it that way also. Right? So you just slide it in like you would any socket, but the wires kind of hang out the side here. And you turn it to tighten and loosen. Alright guys, thanks again for watching. Check out some of these other videos that I have. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Subscribe especially because there's some upcoming videos that I don't want y'all to miss out on. Alright, thanks.